Hey guys, welcome back. Today, uh, we have a sponsored video going on here. It's been a minute. <laughs> so today's video is sponsored by Mellow Cosmetics. Mellow is all vegan, cruelty-free, paraben-free. So in honor of that, I thought that we could do a makeup tutorial that was uh, with all vegan products. So let's do it. Oh yeah sponsorship things. There will be links for everything in the description box as well as a little, there's a promo code for 30% off your order. Now let's jump into it. Let me just put my hair behind my ears. We're going full founding father's ponytail today. Alyssa got me a Slurpee. That's how you know it's gonna be a good day. I'm gonna start by applying the uh, Charlotte uh, Tilbury Magic Serum Crystal Elixir because it was so expensive. So I'm trying to get use out of it. I am like livid that um, this dropper doesn't work. Nothing has ever upset me more in my entire life. So you can tell I've lived a privileged life. And I tried to contact Sephora customer service um, to, oh Jesus, that's a lot, to ask if they could just send me a new dropper, which I doubted. And they confirmed that would not happen. But I just don't like, I don't like returning products for something like that when like I can still use it. Like, yeah, it's annoying and I paid a hundred dollars for this. Like the dropper should work, but I don't like returning products like that because then I know that they just throw it out. <laughs> so I just dump it onto my hands. It doesn't feel like a hundred dollar experience. I'll tell you that much. Anyways, I'm just putting that on to prep my skin a little bit. Okay, so let's do our eyes. Uh, I'm gonna be using the Sinopia palette from Mellow Cosmetics. Just a nice warm brown situation because I think it'll complement. This was the thing that I was like the most excited about and it's so beautiful. This is like right up my alley. Their glitter chrome shadow in the color Golden Glow. So I kind of wanted to do like a little bit of a matte base in my crease area. And then this on the lid for a little glowy bronzer summer situation. Is it summer in Vancouver? it would be hard to hard to tell. We had one week of good weather and during that week, our air conditioning was broken. So <laughs> Mercury retrograde, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so I'm gonna grab that color right there, which is called Nudie. I'm gonna take that right into my crease. I just have a little bit of eye primer down and I just wanna create a little bit of a gradient with that. So I'm just really diffusing that. I'm kind of bringing it closer to my brow bone than I normally would. Um, I just want it to be like a really like soft, pretty look. Then I'm going to, hmm, I think I'm gonna go back and forth between Sinopia and Dust right here. So I just kind of dot back and forth. And then I'm taking that again, just right through my crease. And it doesn't really matter if it, we go onto our lid at all because we're gonna be going over top with our nice glitter shadow after this. So with that deeper shade, I kind of like pulled down towards my lid rather than blending up higher just because I don't want to take um, that deeper color too high up on my, on my eyes. Okay, and I'm gonna jump back to the original brush that I used uh, and just pick up a little bit more of that first color just so we can kind of blend out that deeper shade anywhere we need to. I think I'm gonna leave that there. Well, do I want to put a little bit of that highlight on first? Maybe I will. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of the color Pecan. Pecan on a just a fluffy blending brush I'm just picking up a little bit of that and I'm gonna put that right on my brow bone blending down towards my crease you don't need a whole lot of this it's very pigmented blends a long way I just want to highlight that brow bone a little bit I'm so excited okay this is a well oh gosh I'm so indecisive I'm so sorry maybe I want to do like a little bit of a like a base for this. Yeah, I'm gonna use my uh, Oma Stay Woke Concealer. I didn't know this was vegan, but I wanted to use it today and I looked it up online and lo and behold, it was. Okay, so I'm just grabbing that on this perfect little brush for cut creasing. And I'm just going right down the center of my lid. I'm gonna wipe off a little bit of that brush. And I just kind of like relax my eyes and look down into my mirror. So rather than holding my mirror right in front of me like that, where you can't see it, I can't see it, I just hold it down a little bit lower. And then I go out from that center. And you can use your little fingers to blend it if you want on the outer corners. I just wanna create like a little bit of a sharper kind of line there to put our glitter shadow down. And I like to 
put that just a little bit above my crease so that when I open my eyes with like a glitter shadow on, I won't get any transfer because I have matte in that crease. Sometimes if you're wearing like actually basically all the time, if you're wearing like a shimmery shadow on your lid, then when you open your eyes, it'll kind of like transfer a little bit to that matte area. So I just bring it up a little bit higher so that if it transfers, it transfers back onto itself essentially. Okay, and I'm gonna use a little baby, baby brush to apply this color here. So this is Golden Glow from Mellow. That color is so nice. Okay. And I'm gonna take that right down the center. So this is a newer product for Mellow. And it's probably one of my favorite parts of their range. I just love additions like this because um, I find that like this to me looks almost more like a poured formula. Like I, it's not like a pressed shadow. <laughs> in my opinion. I could be wrong, I'm not sure. Pressed shadows I feel like have such a different texture. We buy so many palettes and I just feel like sometimes there's like those nice like unique textures missing from it, which is why I like additions like this to palettes um, because I feel like it just adds something different and it makes it look so nice and pretty and it's just like a really quick, easy thing to add. And this product, normally I would do I would just kind of apply it with my fingers. It works really well with a brush as well, but I think it's just like so quick and easy to apply with my fingers that I usually do that, but I'm just wanting it to be a little bit more of like an intentional like pseudo cut crease, you know what I'm saying? But that color's so perfect because it's almost like a champagne-y kind of like rose gold color. Let me just get like a good swatch going for you here so you can see it on my hand. It's so pretty. And it just looks like wet. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you go for, but that's what I go for. It's like a really pretty kind of like rosy color and it has like a gold, gold golden glow to it. Um, so it's not gonna look ashy on deeper skin tones or anything like that, but it's not super coppery either because I find that like a lot of um, rose gold shades are really, really orange, like super coppery. Um, so I like that this one is almost more of like a champagne rose gold, like if you, I don't know, we're at a party and then you decided it would be like a cool, fun idea to mix champagne with a rosé. I don't know if that's what people are getting up to, you know? Like maybe you're already a little bit drunk and you think that's innovative. Your call. Now do my little cut creases match? Not fully. Well, more or less, they look pretty similar. <laughs> Oh damn, that color's really pretty though too. I might just leave that as is. Actually, yeah, I am gonna take a little bit of that. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of birch right there on my finger. And I'm just gonna kind of apply that right between our glitter shadow and our matte outer corner there. And I just stamped that onto my lower lash line. And I think that that's gonna just be a nice look. So we'll just, perfect. <laughs> Done. End video. Let's not be ridiculous. Oh no, I'm wiping off my magic crystal elixir. Oh God, that was $12 down the drain. I'm gonna do a liner because like it's been a minute for me. Do I want to though? I did this little like fun look the other day where I extended, hold on, hold on. Have I done a video about this look already? It's really all a blur. I feel like I haven't recorded in like 12 years. Oh yeah. See this? they kind of like extend that lower lash line. So there's like almost a little gap. And I think that's a really good look. <laughs> um, and then you can kind of put your lash further out. So I'm just wondering if I wanna do that right now. I just felt like I looked great when I did it. Okay, so I'm gonna use uh, the black gel liner from Mellow and I'm just gonna grab a little angle brush. <sighs> Nervous. Oh yeah, but I did the bottom. Hmm. Well, let's just do the winged liner on the top and then we'll go from there and see if we want to do that fun thing after. So I'm just kind of lifting that liner away from my outer corner, just at the very, very end. So I'm keeping it tight to the lash line everywhere else, but then right on that outer area, it's a little bit more lifted. So I usually do just kind of like a rough estimate of my liner and then I'll go over and perfect it later. I am intensely sweating right now. 
So I just kind of did the bulk with that gel liner. I prefer to do like the majority of my eyeliner with a gel just because I find that on my old watery eyes, old Betsy's here, <laughs> I don't think that's what people call their eyes. I just find that gels tend to stay longer for me. Um, and then I will just use a liquid liner to kind of just go over and make the edges super crisp. But also I feel like I just can't like, like I feel like my eyeliner doesn't turn out well if I just use a liquid liner for it. Like I really, I'm just all about that duo. So I'm just using my uh, M Cosmetics brush tip liner just to make that nice and sharp on the edges. Oh, my hands are so shaky. <sighs> okay, I can clean that up later. And same thing, I just kind of like to relax my eyes. Oh wow, yeah, that's a good look for me. Okay, um, that sounded facetious, but it wasn't. I just like this long, I like doing that long ass liner these days. What was I saying to you guys before? Oh yeah, I like to do the same thing, um, kind of like look down into my mirror while I'm doing my liner. I do not like to like stretch my eye out. <laughs> it stresses me out. I try to avoid doing that because first of all, you're stretching out your eye, eye, your skin, your skin, your eye bags. It's not good long-term. So I try to avoid it for that. But also because if I stretch this out, when I let it go, then the liner's gonna be in like a different position. <laughs> and so you can't kind of get as like clear of a vision as to like where the liner is going to actually end up on your face once you let go of that, that, that stretch, you're, that reach you're taking. Do these relatively match? I'd say so. I'm gonna go pop on my mascara and my lashes. And then we can jump back and that's it. So with my lashes though, let me tell you how I'm going to do this, okay? Or should I just show you? Let me quickly pop on some mascara and then I'll show you guys how I do my lashes with this weird eyeliner. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my lashes right in the center of the lash and I'm going to apply first to the center as well. And then I'm going to pick up that outer corner of the lash and I'm not going to apply that right on my lash line, I'm going to, so normally you'd want to kind of apply it as like tight to your lash line as you could. I'm applying it just above. So where we kind of lifted up that liner, I'm sort of sticking that lash just above my lash line to connect with that liner. So almost more like I'm putting the lash on the bottom of where that liner connects rather than tight to my lash line. So then it just gives this really nice like well, I think it's nice. This like elongated look, it's sexy. And it's kind of nice too, because then I don't have to cut my lashes, whereas normally I would. And if you feel like sometimes wearing lashes, like for me, I feel like if I don't cut my lashes, then it gives me kind of like sad, like puppy dog eyes. But I feel like doing this sort of technique helps to like lift those eyes back up. So if you have slightly more downturned eyes or very downturned eyes and you feel like lashes just accentuate that, you might, uh, you might dig this. So I'm gonna take my little squishies, it's a clinical term, and I'm going to just kind of squish my natural lashes together with the fake ones, mostly just on that inner corner. What I like to do if I'm being thorough, which is rare, somebody <laughs> contacted me from um, this like university in the UK because they were doing a study about like psychology and like YouTube as a career and different stuff like that. And so I had to like go through and fill out all these different like questionnaires. And one of them was like, I tend to do a thorough job. And I was like, strongly disagree. <laughs> that is like the exact opposite of me and like, I, <laughs> this is what I feel. I do an efficient job, okay? Like I get it done and I get it done quickly and it's, it's done properly. But like when I view Alyssa working, kill me. She is so unbelievably thorough. Like there will not be anything missed. I don't think like we've been working together now just taking some of that gel liner. Oh yeah, that's what I was getting at. If I'm being thorough, then I'll go over top with the gel liner too. Just cover my lash line a little bit because um, I have these round eyes 
And I feel like because my eyes are so round, a lot of the times lashes kind of like pop off my inner corners or they just like won't stick properly to my skin. So they are more so sticking on my lash, which I'm cool with. It's fine. But I just like to go in with like a little bit of a gel liner and kind of cover that up so that you can't see that uh, it's just kind of applied a little willy nilly. <laughs> Okay, anyways, I've worked with Alyssa for over a year now, both on the podcast and then she edits my videos. Have you been editing my videos for a year? Probably about that. I don't think I've ever seen her make a mistake. Myself, however, <laughs> things slip through the cracks here and there. It's okay. So I got a little bit of a gel liner on that inner corner that I don't want there, so I'm gonna let it dry. And then I'll use a spoolie like this, boop, and I'll just uh, scratch it off once it's dry. That's something I was gonna mention about this gel liner that I like as well. It wears really well throughout the day. Like I don't find that like it comes off when my eyes are watery or whatever, um, but it comes off really easily at night because I don't, <laughs> there's some liners that are like liquid concrete, like they're, and you're like rubbing and rubbing and rubbing to like try and get them off at the end of the night. That I'm not about. A lash being on my lash, fine, that's fine. Eyeliner that I can't take off with like paint thinner, it's not my favorite. This is tickling my ins the inside of my eye. Then sometimes what I'll do is I'll take my mascara again. Just on that outer corner, I'll just sort of um, mascara my lashes together because there is a little bit of a separation. Oh God, there's like the biggest clump ever. Ah, close call. Uh, because there is a little bit of a separation between like where my lashes naturally end and where I place the lash. That kind of helps to just like close that gap up. Let's move on. This like camera's a little bit like high right now. Whenever I take it away to like go film or like take pictures elsewhere, which like I took this camera that I normally film with up to my bedroom to take that picture where I was like in the nude, except for like I had a lily over top of my, my, my goodies. <laughs> I had to take this up to my bedroom, but then when I, whenever I bring it back down, I'm like, this is so messed up. And then my videos, cause I don't think to like, I don't remember to change the setting of my camera and like where it sits kind of thing. And so like my videos will be like this for a little bit until I remember to change them back. I feel like it looks moderately even. This side's a little bit, no, this side's a little bit lower. It's fine. Okay, I'm gonna use the uh, same concealer that I use for my kind of eye primer, the Oma Stay Woke Concealer. And I'm using, I think I used T2N. T2. Oh yeah, T2N is their concealers, or foundations. Yeah, shade T2, Fair Lady. And then I'm going to take my newly moist beauty blender and just kind of blend that downwards onto these rosy red cheeks that I have. This concealer is next level bomb. I find that like a lot of um, concealers, by the time I'm through the concealer, I'm kind of like ready to move on to a new one. That has not been the case with this. I'm also gonna put a little bit of this on my, my nose. And then I'll just kind of take any extra back over to my little cheeks. And then anything that's like left, I just sort of press onto my, uh, acne and then I leave it at that because I don't care enough to do anything more as we've all learned and then for my uh foundation I've been using this and really liking it a lot uh the milk makeup sunshine skin tint this is in shade light it's um actually like more coverage than gross that was like a really thick little layer it actually has more coverage than one would probably think being that it has the words skin tint in it and also sunshine. I don't think of thickness when I think of sunshine. Anyways, it has way better coverage than you'd probably assume. So I just kind of put that onto my face in such a way. <laughs> and then I go with my little sponge and blend out. It's just so nice, man. I really like it a lot. It's, um, it's pretty dewy, <laughs> okay? I can't see people with like particularly oily skin loving this formula, but me, desert, level skin. Love it. I think it's great. Sometimes I'll just kind of like rub it on really quick if I'm just going for more of like a no makeup makeup day, but I want a little bit of coverage. It's just a nice one. So I 
I'm happy with the coverage on the areas where my skin's clearer, but I'm going to uh, put a little bit more of my concealer over top of my cheeks. Boop, boop, just a little. And then I'm just kind of keeping that right in that area and bouncing that sponge there rather than kind of like wiping it, which is gonna move the pigmentation and product around to places that we don't want it to be. And then I'm gonna leave it there because I think that looks fine. Now, let's go back to our eyes quickly. So I'm gonna take this shade, yeah, I'm gonna take the shade Dust right there. And I'm going to grab this tiny little short shader brush. And then, okay, I'm gonna hold it a little bit more perpendicular to my face. And I'm going to connect that with that liner. So you can see there's like a little kind of empty space there. That's what we're going for. Or can you, I don't know, hopefully. So we're just kind of like extending that lash line out by doing that. I love it. I love it. Oh, I don't know why. It's just like that look has really been doing it for me lately. And I kind of, I usually use a liner for this part. Like I'll connect the li liner in like just like a super thin gel liner or something like that. Or sometimes I'll even use like a brow pomade to connect that. But I wanted to do this like a little bit more diffused just because like our look up here is a little bit more diffused. And then... I'll take my little blending brush. Where did I put it though? Oh, right. I put it in the wrong brush cup. Okay. And I'm going to take the uh, color Nudie, that first kind of warm brown color we put in our crease. Tap off the extra, extra, <laughs> excess. Uh, and then I'm going to start from my center of my bottom lash line and then blend up towards that outer corner because I don't want to blend down too far out there but I want to um, soften that color just a little bit. Then I'm just going to take a big old brush with nothing really on it and just kind of blend over top just to diffuse any harshness. I'm taking a clean brush and sort of just like blending that out a little bit further through that. Oh, I just love that. I don't know why, like I couldn't tell you. I just think it looks so pretty. <laughs> so that's where I'm going to leave my eyes for today. I think this has been great. Let me pop off, do my brows real quick. Then we'll jump back, finish up here, okay? Okay. Got my brows on. Been loving them soap brows lately. Oh yeah, let me put my bar of soap away. <laughs> I almost put my like elbow in that. Okay, let's do our face. I have a little bit of an idea here, okay? Hear me out. I'm going to use, I just think that'll turn out pretty. Okay, I'm gonna use the uh, Stardust Glow Palette from Mellow. So it has kind of like the two highlight colors and then a blush, blush over here, bronzer. <laughs> It's always backwards on my camera. I haven't used this one before, so I'm looking forward to it. I was kind of thinking, like I liked this sort of like more pinky champagne highlight. So I like that shade Luna, and then I was kind of thinking of putting this Nude Sticks Glow Stick that I got over top of it. They don't call it that, Nudie's Glow, because it's more of like a sheer formula, but it's super, super glossy. But I thought that the colors were kind of similar, so you can kind of see that's the uh, Nude Sticks one there and that's the Mellow Cosmetics one. And so I thought it might be nice just because, you know, I'm a cream gal, to go over top of the Mellow one with that because it's still translucent. It'll still let a little bit of that brightness from the Mellow one show through, but then we got that like nice moist texture from the nude sticks. Okay, do you see how this is coming together? It's gonna be great, guys. So these Stardust Glow Palettes, they have two different shades. So they have light to medium, which is the one I'm gonna be using today. And then they have the medium to dark one. These bronzers, I swatched it before I was doing this video because I hadn't tried these ones yet. They're so pigmented. So I think that the bronzers will probably work across like a wide range of skin tones. But I think for um, those of you that are quite fair, such as myself, Let's like take it easy on this. <laughs> Cause I think it's like super, super pigmented just from what I swatched. So we'll be going in gently, gently. I'm gonna take a big like fluffy brush for that bronzer. So that's in the color Dawn. And I'm going to just like barely tap my brush in. You can see how much product is on there, okay? And then I like to kind of just pat the product on first and then I go through with my sweeping motions. That's insane, dude. Like there was so little product on that brush, but you can kind of see already like how much, how much pigmentation there is. 
So again, and especially because I'm going over top of product that's not set because I never set my foundation, um, but we are going in with a powder product that is a little bit more pigmented than perhaps like normal. That's why I like to do that kind of tapping motion so that we sort of like settle that product. It almost like helps to set the foundation in a way with that powder and then we can sweep to sort of start blending out. Sometimes what can happen if you're applying those powder products over top of a wet like liquid or cream base is that if you just go right in with like your blending motion, sometimes it'll just like stick right to where you first applied it or where your brush first touched down and get like patchy and not blend out properly just because it's like absorbing that onto that moisture. So I just like to do that really, really light tap and then go ahead and go in. I really like the shade of that bronzer a lot. And actually that's like fairly easy because I'll, sh I'll show you guys <laughs> how this swatches, okay? Like when I first swatched that, I was like, oh, this is gonna be so like intense because a lot of um, a lot of bronzers are like a quite like sheer formula. So you like have to spend time building it up. So when I first swatched that, I was like, ooh, damn. That's like more pigmented than I'm like used to these days. And so I was a little bit worried about it being able to be sheared out easily, but I do feel like that's shearing out really nicely and it's not getting like patchy or anything like that. But it also doesn't seem to be getting like cakey because sometimes as well, powders that are super soft, they feel really beautiful in the pan and they swatch really beautiful and stuff like that. But then when you go to layer them because they're so soft and so powdery, they layer in a way that looks really, really cakey. But this one's layering really nice and like thinly. It doesn't look like thick or heavy on my skin, which is pleasant for me. Okay, I'm gonna take a little fan brush and I'm gonna use my Cover FX blush in the shade Soft Peach. So we have kind of like the matte formula here and then the shimmery one. I'm gonna like dot back and forth between the two because I don't want it fully matte, but I don't want that, I don't want all of that shimmer, you know? And then same thing, I just really, really lightly touch that to my skin and then I can go in with my kind of sweep, sweeping motions. I remember one time like one of my boyfriends was watching me do my makeup and he was like, so you like, put on all of this foundation to like cover the redness and then you put red blush on. <laughs> and I was like, yes, that's exactly what you do. And it's perfect. I really like that. Liking this little like beachy combo I have here for my skin. Okay, let's do our, I'm gonna use that same fan brush, just why not, you know what I mean? And I'm gonna use that color Luna, just tapping off that excess and then I'm starting kind of like right at the top of my cheek. I blend backwards first towards my temple and then forwards a little bit. It's a nice formula. I really like that color a lot. Like it doesn't look that like golden in the pan, but it's like just got like a really, really nice warmth to it because a lot of the times, <laughs> every single time I start a video, I'm like, let me tell you everything that I hate traditionally about powder highlights. I find that a lot of powder highlights tend to look a little bit more silvery on me. And I always opt for warmer face products like 99.9% .9 of the time. And this one doesn't look like it would be super, super warm toned or anything. And it's not, it's like really nice and neutral, but it definitely doesn't look like silvery, which is, it's really doing a lot for me right now. Fine. Maybe I'll use powder products once in a while. <laughs> Over the past couple months, because I've been trying to like use more of my product that like I just have kicking around in my collection, I've been like using more powder products and stuff like that. And I feel like every time I use them, I'm like, I hate powder products. They suck so much. I, they're the worst. And then I put it on and I'm like, it's not so bad. <laughs> but anyways, I'm gonna go over top of that highlight anyways, just for shits uh, with this uh, Nudies Glow. So this is from Nude Sticks and it's in the shade Bubbly Bebe. I'm gonna take that on my little ring finger and I'm just going to, oh yeah. <laughs> the colors just blend together seamlessly. Some call me a genius, I don't know. So I'm just tapping that over top of that highlight just to give us a little bit of a kind of nice dewy texture. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. Love it. Cool. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna put my little lipstick on. I kind of like, oh wait, I don't think that was the lip liner that I wanted to use. Was it? Okay, so I'm gonna use uh, the lip liner in the color Harper first. So this one, it's like that perfect, like you know before Kylie Jenner came out with Kylie Cosmetics and became a billionaire? 
She would always wear a lip. I can't do this while, while doing lip liner. She would always wear like one specific lip color and everyone would be like, what's that lip color? And she like wouldn't answer. And I'm pretty sure that like, it wasn't actually her brand, but then she was low key trying to make it seem like it was her brand. This is that color, okay? That's, this is how I feel. It's so similar to that kind of like rosy nude shade. So I like to just kind of put my liner on and then I just blend it out with my little pinky. And I try to make sure that they match moderately. And then I'm just going to sort of dot that on to the center of my bottom lip and I just blend that right out. I like having that more defined top lip and then, like impossible, more defined top lip and nice little soft, cute kitten nose bottom lip. You know what I'm saying? I still don't know what lip I wanna use. I think I'm gonna use Ibiza. So this is their uh, matte liquid lip paint. What I like about these is that they're not super matte. You know, <laughs> when matte lip paints were really popular and they were like the formula that was super thick and like really, really, really matte and it just looked dry and uh, stupid. These ones are more of like a velvety kind of finish and they're super thin on the lip as well. So they don't look dry and cracky and stupid. I was debating between this one and Sydney, but I liked that because this is, hold on, let me show you. This is Ibiza. It's a little bit more like neutral brownie kind of like peachy and then Sydney was the other color that I was debating on which is a little bit more pinky kind of well let me just take a little bit of Sydney and put that over top yeah mm-hmm bomb there we go oh I'm not taking out my founding father's pony why would I have ever done that let me like release my bangs a little bit though like this they're flowing and nice that's it guys so you guys that is the final look using 100 percent vegan products uh thank you again to mellow cosmetics for sponsoring today's video thank you to you guys for supporting me as always and yeah everything will be linked down in the description box below go check it out and i will see you guys next time peace out